As you set out to collect soil samples, make sure you have the right kind of vehicle. Depending upon the kind of roads you are likely to encounter on the way to the primary sampling units, you might need a four-wheel drive or a two-wheel drive car. If the roads are not motorable, consider hiring a motorbike if you don't already have one at your disposal. You would need a smartphone. It should have as operating system Android version 9.0 or higher with at least 4 gigabytes of RAM. The smartphone will be very important to the sampling process. It will be a key data recording device and could even be your primary location device. A lot would depend on it. So please make sure you've got a good phone. Please refrain from using cheaper off-brand ones. In fact, it will not be a bad idea to have a backup smartphone, especially if you are going to use it as your GPS device. Along with the phone or phones, make sure you have a power bank to make sure the phone never runs out of power. Make sure that the phone has an app that helps scan barcodes and the maps.me app. Make sure you've got the ODK form loaded onto the phone. Carry a printed version of the form with you as backup. The Maps.me app notwithstanding, you should ideally use a GPS device, a handheld GPS device as your navigation tool. Your GPS device would need batteries, so make sure to carry backup batteries. Ideally, soil samples should be collected using an auger. There should ideally be an Edelman type auger. If an auger is not available, you can use a pipe or cylinder around 7 cm in diameter. The mouth edge of the pipe should be sharp. Along with the pipe, you would need a hammer or a mallet. You would need it to hammer the pipe down into the ground and to hammer the soil out of the pipe. If you cannot arrange for an auger or a pipe, you can collect soil samples with a spade, the kind that has a flat bottom and not a pointed one. In fact, if the soil is very sandy or very clayey, collecting topsoil sample might be easier with a spade. Bring measuring tape to mark depths on the auger or on the pipe. Ideally, the tape should also be long enough to mark 2.5 meters, which is the distance between the sampling points on the sampling plot. You need buckets or tubs, two of them, one for holding the topsoil and the other for holding subsoil, before the soil is put into bags. It is important to make sure that the topsoil and the subsoil extracted from the ground do not mix. To that end, it would help to make sure that the two buckets or tubs are of two different colors and to label one as subsoil and the other as topsoil. You would need a knife, a straight knife of about 20 cm, to push the soil samples out of the auger if needed, and to slit the soil scooped out on the spade. To collect and carry samples of the extracted soil, you need bags. You need one plastic bag and one cloth or paper bag per sample. And that's four plastic bags and four paper bags per sampling plot. Take some extra, just in case. You need Ziploc plastic pouches, 5 cm by 7 cm, with QR codes attached to them. You would have received the QR codes from your country supervisor. The QR codes are in duplicates, do not separate them. Make sure to carry permanent markers and pens, along with writing pads. You would need them to write on the sampling bags, for marking depths on the auger, and as backup if electronic recording devices do not work. You'd also need 50 kg jute bags to carry the different soil samples from the field to your home base and to later ship them off to the lab. As a second best option, you can also use cardboard boxes, the sturdy kind which is commonly used for storage and shipping. With all these materials and equipment arranged, you're good to go.